This week on RSVMB Update, Ninja Strike 27 brings changes to the bank, agility click boxes, and the abyss. Some good, some bad. We touch on accessibility for the game as a whole with a focus on Croesus and share our thoughts on the most recent microtransaction experiments. This is RSBNB Update, episode 850, recorded Thursday, October 7th, 2021. Right on the button. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of RSBNB Update. Just Tannis and myself in this week. Nice. Nice little yeah. quiet week, or so they say. But uh, it's, I don't think it's quiet. I don't think it's quiet. <laughs> there, there's definitely noise coming I from know. the peanut gallery. I know. I, I know. I, I saw. I, I heard and saw what your comments are on some of the things from the live stream, and we are going to go through all of that. And of course, we also have a ninja strike. We um, have a new uh, bundle that's going to be out for. Uh, couple weeks i believe it is but nonetheless if you're joining us for the first time uh, you can find our show notes at update.rsbnb.com of course we're also at friends chat bits bites and our discord is at rsbnb.com slash discord if you want to join us and chat in there um i am shane 12088 and he is tannis 79 so ninja strike 27 the autumn scatter shot they're calling it Anything? How how do you feel about this one? Anything jump out at you? Um, all the Noden, or not all the Noden, all of the uh, Elder God War stuff. Um, seems like they've been pretty. They're pretty proactive with that. Um, yeah, and yeah. did a lot. That I, they could have almost centered the strike pretty much around it. I mean, to me, it does kind of look like it's centered around it. But um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. One of the things that people were jumping up and down about, and I'm just jumping into this episode right now. You know, normally sometimes we might take a while to get into it, but I'm just going to jump in this week. One of the things people were really excited about with this Ninja Strike was this first uh, patch note. And a new button has been added to the bank interface, which will toggle whether the bank automatically switches from the currently open tab when depositing items. Okay. And this is a feature that is designed to make it so that if you deposit your Dragor Longsword, you'll wind up on the tab where you store your Dragor Longsword. And people don't like this feature. And, you know, that's understandable that there's uh, going to be a variety of opinions regarding the bank. But I don't know that this was needed, first of all. And, you know, maybe it showed highly in the ninja dojo when they uh, had that open. But the second thing is, is that they put this button right next to the deposit buttons. You know how you have the deposit uh, backpack, deposit worn, deposit familiar, deposit coin pouch uh, buttons? They put this button right next to that. So what you have is you have four deposit buttons, then right next to it a toggle that controls what happens to the bank tab when you deposit an item, not with those buttons, but just clicking from the inventory above there. And that, to me, just screams as though that, you know, there is no place to put this button, let's just put it there. In reality, what we probably need at this point in terms of um, managing the bank is just a, you know, a dedicated bank settings tab where you could... um, have a generalized view of what all your uh, bank tab uh, bank tabs are named, um, what your presets are named, and of course things like this that control how you deposit into the bank. Um, and you know another thing that while we're on this in terms of if we're looking at bank settings that could be added. You remember back in the old days, uh, there was a swap or insert mode where you would just be able to drag onto a specific item and it would either swap the position or insert it based on swap or insert mode. And now you kind Mm -hmm. of got to either, you know, if you want to swap the position, you land on the item. And if you want to insert it, you just drag it in between. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, for talking about adding settings, that is something uh, that did cross my mind with that. But, you know, lo and behold, I, I, I guess I can see why 
players like having this option, but in all honesty, this button does not feel as though it fits there, and it creates a subpar user experience. How do you feel about it? Well, there was a reason I didn't mention it when you when you asked me about <laughs> the uh, the Ninja Strike, um, and I don't know if this is my own bias, just because I. I actually think it makes lots of sense that it goes to the tab that the item is stored on. I mean, you know how many times I use that to figure out what tab that damn item yeah. belongs in anyway? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's fine. The other – here's my problem. And in, in, in traditional Jagex fashion, instead of doing it right, like what you're talking about with it's time to add a bank settings. Um, and of course the reason for that would be, well, it would take time. Right. And that's out of the scope of the Ninja team. It's out of the scope of the Ninja team, so on and so forth. But we just had this brand new, beautiful, wonderful update, in my opinion, to the bank. Um, it was the bank rework. And, now we're cluttering it up. Now two we're now ago, we're messing. Actually. It doesn't even feel like it's been two years though. Like, and now we're starting to squish buttons yeah. and toggles, and in my opinion, unnecessary toggles. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it was a problem. Yeah, and you know this raises a whole other question about how the bank performs on mobile. Um, I still maintain that the bank is one of the most difficult UIs to use on mobile. Um. Post yes, launch. But, but you know what helps that when you touch when you touch the item and it goes to the tab that that item belongs. In. Yeah, and <laughs> it, that helps, right? And we're not saying don't add the toggle. We're just saying don't put the toggle where it was placed in terms of the button. And you know, it, it might even make more sense to put it, you know, near the bottom of that interface where you find things like the um, withdraw as a note or withdraw as placeholder option. Yeah. I mean, because I'm that's kind of in the same necessary. vein of what we're talking about. So, yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm fine if they would have done what you're saying and put it in a different yeah. spot, but I don't really think it was right. necessary. And the problem the with that day. is that there's so much that you don't have much space down there. And you're dealing with what are effectively fixed pixel sizes that you can just automatically, you know, squeeze everything and make everything tinier without oh. redoing that entire portion of the UI. And lo and behold, we come back to that same problem of the RuneScape UI. <laughs> yeah, but this was one that was kind kind of worked. It was it was better than most. I mean, sure, we could still pick out a couple things, and I remember we did on the show when, but at, for the most part. It was one of RS's better UIs. Yeah. And that, that's what bugs me. It's like, why clutter it up? I mean, that visual clutter is is a barrier. I know options are great. I'm usually all for options, but I'm not for visual clutter. Yeah, and you're entirely right with that because you have the other idea as well from the accessibility angle in terms of how you use your magnifiers that mm – -hmm. When you're interacting with the UI, you need to have clear defined buttons. And if you start getting things cluttered, it gets confusing quickly at that scale. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you, you, your field of view is, is limited and um, over, you know, you, re, you rely on spatial memory you, and every little thing that adds to it is that something else that now you have to be aware of where that's at and you have to be able to differentiate like oh you know here is the deposit all button so i know that this toggle is going to be right next to it yeah. or, or whatever the case yeah. is like now i've got to memorize that and figure yeah. that out and um, and for what yeah. for, for what it's worth i um come from a background where i'm always paying attention to the the very close pixel perfect nature of a ui so this stood out uh, to me, like a sore thumb and um, caused me visual pain uh, when I saw it. But, you know, for most players, they're not going to think about that. But this is just the feedback uh, that goes with that and is it is a different perspective than I think most might have considered. Hence why we've uh, spent the first uh, the first eight minutes talking 
about a single button. <laughs> well, you know, hey, it deserved it. Yeah. Um, Some of these patch notes will fly right through. This yep. one needed to talk about. The size of the click boxes throughout the Anachrony Agility course have been made bigger for to make traversal easier. <laughs> we needed this one two years ago as well. <laughs> WTF. I mean, hey, maybe I can do a lap around the agility course now for the oh. first time in two years. Yeah, oh. um. we're not we're not on a good roll so far, are we? I, like these are no. good patch notes, but oh my god! The well, fact I mean, yeah, this one's a, this one's a good patch note, but yeah, the fact that <sighs> what what can you say? Thank you. I'll say I'll say thank you. Yeah, I'll say thank you that as well. Be, I mean, yeah. Uh, maybe that's what I'll do when I go for the agility pet. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Um, and from the looks of it, the codexes are still around thirty mil for the double surge and double escape. By the way. Oh yeah, I, I, I believe it, especially now. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go up. Yeah. Um, the names of follower overrides now appear in examine text for the follower they're overriding. Good. Yeah, I like that. So you can see whether it's uh, uh, Brains or Bernie that is uh, overriding uh, your Ripper Demon. Items in the loot window can now be examined to view their examine text, plus the Grand Exchange or High Alchemy values where applicable. Good. I had no idea that wasn't possible. Uh, Master Capes can now be purchased from Elin in the Max Guild's Tower. Master firemaking, fletching, thieving, ranged, runecrafting, and magic capes can now also be bought from their respective skill master stores. Oh, we can get master capes at the max guild? Yep. Ooh, ooh. Well, see, now that took a year to give that another little use, but this is, you know, this is the the only use we've gotten added to it. Yeah. It's this war's retreat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it, though. Uh, added a consume all option to wicked hook teleport tokens. Ooh. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Um, too. the names of rune crafting altars and their mysterious runes now reflect their associated runes. Good. Because, you know, if you're starting to rune craft, there's a very real chance that you're going to enter the mind altar or try to enter the mind altar instead of the air altar. Uh, when I you're getting started. What you started. mean is. When you first start rune crafting, your mind is going to be altered. Yes, very good point. Very good yeah. point. As we all learned um, back You're when RuneScape Two numb. came out, and we uh, <laughs> had to endure about uh, six or seven years without RuneSpan. <sighs> Which is Hard close times. to eight, I think. Now that I think about it, um, extra fine sand can and it can now be blessed at more Ceridomen aligned altars, such as Entrena. Um, Sithraid Abbey, Everlight statues, and Ceridomist, uh player-owned house chapels. Okay. For anybody undergoing the uh, blessed flask grind, of course. Mm -hmm. In addition, you may now simply left-click or tap the sand while next to one of the above altars to bless it instead of manually using the sand on the altar. That's a game changer. Yeah, nice quality of life there. Yeah. And, it, and you know, this one is making playing with mobile easier, I find. And pretty much all of the patch notes we've talked about here um, mm -hmm. do that, except for the Max Guild one, because that one's just a general uh, quality of life one. Mm -hmm. Interacting with any of the uh, skill check barriers to the inner circle of the Abyss will now play a shorter animation. Wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I remember going into the Abyss a long, long time ago for abyssal rune crafting when that came out and oh god those animations were a pain um back in uh the old rs2 days yeah i feel like i would come out of animations and be in combat mm -hmm. and it sucked yeah yeah it was entirely possible to do that yeah. it's it's also uh no longer possible to fail the agility obstacles in the abyss instead there's now a hard level 30 requirement in the respective skills just to cross that obstacle mm. okay and, and these two are of course and combined with the rune one are all aimed at entry level rune crafting which is interesting that we're looking at that in a ninja strike i wonder what the 
uh, reason was, or, well, I mean, we know what the reason was, um, improve lower level rune crafting. But I wonder, um, who gave the ninja team the kick in the pants to look at lower level rune crafting like that. That's what I'm wondering. It's pro. I mean, on the surface, it looks like that would come from analytics and mobile, right? Like yeah. and new player experience. Um, one, if you think about it, um, one of the cool things when you first start playing RuneScape, you don't have any money, right? So you kind of learn how to kind of Iron Man it, but you yeah. don't know what Iron Man is. Yeah. So that's not a thing. RuneCraft is one of those, yeah, right? Because it goes with the magic. And I mean, fire runes are so expensive nowadays compared to what they used to be. Ooh, wonderful yeah. money making. Yeah. Uh, Falador Shields now have a check charges option, which means an info box will now appear when checking charges. The prayer restore option has been renamed to restore prayer and re- reordered some of the options to make room for the new one. Okay. So that's mm-hmm. once again, early game achievement uh, system uh, reward. Previous action bar presets are now remembered when loading a new layout that has more additional action bars than the previous one. And this, of course, uh, for anybody unaware of what we're talking about here, last month it was made so that if you uh, have your action bar uh, layouts with a- extra action bars on your screen, that's now preserved as part of your saved layout. And it's not really said anywhere that that's the case in game, but it was a big deal when that came out last month. And I just figured we'd reinforce that right now. Yeah. I. I never had more than one action bar, so I never understood yeah. the uh, importance of this. But um, I, I think it's probably great after listening to people that do. Um, yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, and then the question going forward is, will we ever get to a point um, where we're actually able to decouple action bars from saved layouts? Because if you want a different action bar layout, say you want one with two action bars up, but you want one with, say, four action bars up instead, that has to just be a different uh, save game layout. So that would be, I think, the next step to take this. But if I remember the dialogue that happened around that, they said that was a pretty difficult thing to pull off, hence why they went the way they did uh, for the time being. Well, I mean, what you could, couldn't the other thing is just give us more save layouts because yeah. we only have a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now here's two big ones. Uh, the Caradet Pylon buff and the Roar of Osseus buff uh, now display the time remaining on the buff bar icon while active. Oh, I like that. Yeah, very good for archaeology. Such a wonderful skill. Yeah. See, yeah, I like that. That's nice. And they have added the following places within the clan notice board setup screen. Elder God Wars, Arch Glacier, Croesus, and Carapac, Raksha, and the Rex Matriarchs. And it's at this point, I'll remind everybody, if you need a clan, check out Clan Quest. We are on World 66. Just join uh, the Clan Chat Clan Quest if you uh, want to see what we're all about. And hey, if you've determined that you like what what uh, you see, just uh, just join us. Ask any of the uh, Silver Keyed folks on how to join and we'd be uh, happy to help you along with the process. It's a wonderful open clan uh, leadership uh, is an asshole. We've got a very open Discord and a very open website. And, you know, we really learned this o- over the past uh, week and a half with uh, Croesus, is that we've we've got lots of uh, friends from around the community, from the podcast and Clan Quest people. And the the way Clan Quest is structured is it's been set up in such a way that all of these uh, community members who are adjacent to the clan itself have been actually able to take part in the clan's um, Croesus events, believe it or not. And and that was a really fun, fun thing to see, that it was just worked out so nicely like that. Yeah, so. that, that, that is, that's awesome, especially with a boss um, that, you know, requires eight people, or yeah. at least when you started. You yeah, know, like, and, sure. and that's a prime example. We were looking for Croesus people. We started with four, and we worked our way up to eight eventually. And I think, and I think half of them weren't even clan members. They were just people who were guesting in the chat. And we brought them in. They were able to join our Discord and participate as if they were full members. And and coming from the leadership side, that's one thing that 
I'm very pleased that we've pushed for is a very open Discord and open uh, community like that. So if this sounds interesting to you, just uh, uh, check us out. Join us, uh, Clan Quest in game. You heard it here. Shane's an advocate of open borders. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to fixes for the Croesus front now. The scripture Bic has been added to the Croesus uh, boss log uh, collection. Our rest in peace for anybody who uh, got one and didn't have that ticked off. Um, Tannis, these books are upwards of, you know, 700, 800 mil. I, th- I think they cow. crossed a bill. Oh, Yeah. Man. Yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. Could you imagine getting one of those? Um, oh, apparently we're down to around 615 still. But, you know, you compare the one to uh, when that one's 75, the jazz one is, is 22. So <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe stuff has held its value the way well, it yeah, has. It, it's, it's, it must be so stinking rare. No, it's not. It, it's just that the Clue community has, has lots of money around it. And they'd rather get their clues for, through skilling than go AFK something like Hellhounds or Glacers. That, that does make sense now. Yeah. yeah. And plus there's a nice little XP boost that you get sometimes when you're using it. This has also had the side effect, and this is why I've actually been doing um, testing out Cross's public instances and a few other uh, runs this week. Um, the manuscript pages are 1.5 to 1.8 as of recording. Okay. And they're relatively common. So, um, but anyways, continuing on, uh, the buy limit has been updated for the new fungi and fungal materials, uh, 10,000 for standard and 5,000 for enriched. Now this one was cool. done in a hot fix last week, but Iron Men can now join, uh, non Iron Men accounts in private Croesus encounters. Uh, Croesus uh, bank preset has been added. Rare rewards dropped after defeating Croesus will now broadcast. They previously did not, which uh, meant that we had to rely on the honor system. The new lore books, uh, four of them, have been added to the Master Quest Cape, which can be uh, found while scaling outside of uh, the Croesus area. So, once again, one of the most elusive capes in the game has a few more uh, requirements added to it. The player can now use bladed dive while equipping while equipping uh, Tavia's fishing rod. That didn't work last week. Um, number of players for public instances has been lowered to eighteen. That was fixed in a hot fix last week, and this week is a new one. That Taga's core hammer and Santa's fire torch will now be able to roll for the respective arrow tips when skilling inside the Croesus boss fight. Uh oh. Yeah, well, that's cool. so you can get those arrow tips there. And there was another one that didn't make its way into the patch note this week, is that the effects of Santa's Fire Torch now also work on Bloodwood Trees. So if you're going uh, to do... all your, that. Yeah, so if you're going to go do your criminal bolt run, use your Fire Torch, and oh boy, you're going to get a lot. And just as a point for how many you can pull from this, I did a Bloodwood that criminal bolt run. Guess how many bolts I got from one run? Uh, I don't know, because I don't even know where the blood trees are. Uh, 740. Is that a lot? Yeah, it is. Nice. Previously, you'd be in the three to 500 range. Oh, snap. Yeah. All right. Because it's uh, 10, uh, 10 bolts per, per log. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Damn. Big buffs with that. Um. There is also an issue fixed this week, uh, preventing the players from cooking the new fungal soups, which I find interesting. And I don't know if anybody is using these because these fungal soups boost your proficiency in one of the skills in the Croesus encounter. But Hmm. it lowers your efficiency of another skill in the encounter. And if you're formatting, you're going to always want to make sure that you're able to go and, you know, pick up the slack. If uh, something goes wrong, you need to kind of step in somewhere else. So that's a bit of a question if anybody's ever going to use these soups. Uh, Dyed uh, grasping rune pouches will now correctly revert to tradable versions when all runes are removed from them. 
and fixed an issue where the dyed versions of the Grasping Rune Pouch were not triggering their special effect of reducing uh, rune costs when doing combat abilities. You can also now sell the soups on the Grand Exchange. Cinderbane gloves can't poison the boss. That was a bug that we had in there uh, last week. And this is one that the PVMers are going to have uh, mixed feelings about. Added Croesus to the final boss and insane final boss achievements. I guess it's a, I mean, it's a boss. Yeah, right? so you got to do it. You got to do boss. it. And it's actually pretty fun. Players can no longer get in, stuck inside Croesus when the vulnerability timer ends. Um, fixed an issue where drops uh, were not appearing on uh, the adventurer's log. Now, here's one that was causing these uh, resources to make their way outside the encounter. The water fan no longer duplicates encounter resources. Oops. Uh-huh. And we actually saw an issue with this because somebody uh, bought some of these on the Grand Exchange and weren't able to use them. And it from that, it turned out that, oh, these were the ones from the encounter that managed to make their way on the GE. So just some little bits and bobs like that that kind of got messed up along the way. But um, let's talk about the – have another look at the accessibility of Croesus because mushroom paths are now consistent and continue to sparkle after the instance timer expires. But there's something here that wasn't mentioned with this, and I think this is going to have an impact on your ability to to do the boss, and you're going to probably have to do the mushroom walk after this, is that previously um, the mushroom path was consistent throughout the entire instance. Now it changes throughout the encounter to the point where every time you walk through that path, there's a chance that the sparkly bits might change. Yeah. That's a, that's a bummer. Um, and I, I feel like we're going backwards. Um, and, and I don't, I don't understand it. Um, you know, I, I get difficulty in making it challenging. Um, but I, there has to be a balance and i feel like accessibility is not it, it it's not even on the i mean it's not even on the whiteboard right no one even yeah spit it out um it's, it's not even a concern and you know jagex they they have a history and, and, of and let's doing be clear some good if you were able to see these it would not be an issue but we tested this last weekend when we were there and you couldn't see the sparkles on the mushroom patch. We had to tell you which ones it were and or which ones were active, and you had to remember that through the entire instance. Yeah, yeah. I, I just went through it and, and memorized the path before they hit go, um, which which was fine. And I mean, and 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 how how many people want to do that, right? Instead of just right. and, see some sparkly things. Um, so it was already challenging. Um, and the other option for you is you're going to have to surge play to dive across the other end or, right. you know, walk the path, which right. I don't even know if, how the other side is for you because there's there's mushrooms. And once again, I feel like that's going to be a low contrast issue. Yeah, I mean, with what we were doing this weekend, I, I thought that I had there was at least one system that I knew that I could do that would work. Right. Um, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> we will, I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Um, I just, you know, a lot of times they're the things that they have done that have been good really weren't like intentional. But the the same thing is happening now, I guess, when when <laughs> they're making things worse. Um and, and and don't even get me started on the the core at the end and and the particles. Um, 
that that's such an oversight that i i will never wrap my head around that um i ju i just don't understand I, it feels like there was no you know like no discussion no n nothing like no one even brought it up um even if it was an idea that was shot down and had its had reasoning for it that would be something but i feel like it never entered yeah, anyone's and I mean, mind. We, we have there. There was actually something, um, you know, based on this that you know some might see as inflammatory that was said in the live stream on this that we'll get to after. But the point remains is that we're three for three here, um, with these Elder God War fronts where there has been an accessibility issue on the visual side. In your case, um, well, Carapac was yeah. was had too wide a field of view, right? Well, it was too, it was too, yeah, but it was too narrow for okay. me, right? Like there was too many things going, that like, spread across, but I could only see a small part, which, you know, Hey, that isn't really any different than a lot of other RuneScape bosses, right? Okay. Uh, Fair enough. But it was the matter of, um, Carapac was a special case in, I you couldn't get away. There was no where I could run. Yeah. It, um. So so that was a, a little bit different. Um. Now the the Arch Glacier. I mean, it had a lot of problems because of the contrast. Um. But in one special respect, it was really good, and that was from a mechanics level. And if you think yeah. about accessibility from a cog. Well, and even if you think of it from a mobility or cognitive um, side of things, uh, that's really nice to have the way that they did the mechanics there. Um, but but when we get to Croesus, it, it's and it's not just visual. When you think about this change this week, that can also be cognitive and mobility as well. Um, it, it's not good all around. So. You know, I'm just kind of at a loss for this one. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like they want to keep making it harder and harder and harder because it's a skilling boss, and I don't understand that. And, I, and I don't. you know, they're within their right to, but do it in a way that's accessible. You can design with accessibility <sighs> yeah. in mind. Um, and you know, when Carapac came out, I said to you, "Hey, this is an interesting thing from an accessibility angle. Write an article on it." Well, things came up, yeah. and by that time, that article was, you know, being thought about. The glacier was out, and that brought mm -hmm. another angle to it. Mm -hmm. And then, once again, wait a week and a bit, gather some opinions. Mm -hmm. Oh, Croesus is on the way. Let's wait. Oh, yeah. more of the same. At this point, <laughs> we're for the accessibility, we're just going to wait until a full front comes out and uh, see what yeah. has to be said about that. Because, you know... We're three for three. I don't want to say that we're going to be four for four on this, but I have a feeling we're going to be having a long discussion about accessibility at the end of the Elder God Wars. You know, I think it's one that we need to have, though, because I've been um, I'm very fair. If anyone that's ever listened to me knows that I'm very fair. Even the updates that, you know, were were obviously unintentional that were good. I'm going to I'm going to tell you how good they are. Yeah, like the um, skyboxes and filters. I mean, many times. Well, you know, um, the outlining that that was for mobile. Um, yeah, but it was a wonderful update. Uh, a bunch of them like that, right? The only one that I I recollect that was purposeful um, was something that Mod Warden initiated with the um, interface scaling and and now with the um, font with the font. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and you know and that was a huge thing that that was great but um it it just seems like there wasn't any thought when it came to it in in this regard and and even before that right like i i still have haven't been able to get through um the battle, the, of, the monolith. Uh, battle of the monolith with the takar yeah so i mean the whole elder god wars has just kicked me right in the nuts and we're very fortunate that you didn't need that or the quest to be able to actually go fight the bosses. <laughs> well, me and everybody else too, right? Yeah. Like that, yeah. that, that, 
had trouble with it. I'm I'm sure there there had to been other people. I I can't be the only one, but yeah. It, and believe me, I'm coming from some a place that I understand that you can't you you can't make it. it totally accessible right there's yeah. always going to be some give and take I especially don't on a game world, that's 20 years old right i'm i'm i don't expect the world i just want it to at least be in the conversation yeah and this you can tell no one ever raised it as or maybe they did as we'll hear later in the live stream but i think like i mean at that point it's 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 just this this is just another one of these patch notes that uh you know keeps on giving for us here and we'll, we'll have to wait and see how this goes in the live stream because i think we'll be coming back to this so yeah all right uh then we got some changes for the glacier front um not too many to write home about scripture when damage scaled down for uh pvp um the abilities from the generals found around the god wars dungeon will now work against the glaciers outside of uh, the arch glacier fight the Gloves of Passage buffed uh, tooltip has been updated as it was previously showing incorrect information. Reaper points and marks of war have been adjusted for the hard mode Arch Glacier fight. I think they were giving normal uh, marks of war and Reaper points. The special attack of the Dark Shard of Lang will no longer be cleared when changing weapons. However, the damage cap is unaffected um, by the effect for non mully damage. I think this might make these weapons a little bit more um appetizable is that the word i'm looking for i don't know what word i'm looking um, for palatable 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 yeah, yeah there you go um because you know, you know the, these weapons weren't meta changing and i don't think they were meant to be um i don't hear people talking about them that often nowadays but maybe this might um tilt it in that direction uh for I the mean, notes we'll for the note on front, uh, the Slayer Tracker encounter once again display the name of a cluster task instead of a monster in that cluster. So, for example, we'll now read dragons instead of bronze dragons. And the Slayer Counter tooltip now uses the same description as the ability tracker. And this came in uh, with the note on front so that if you completed a Slayer task, this description now suggests getting a task from the optimal Slayer Master for your level that you've unlocked rather than the Slayer Master who gave you your previous task. Man, I miss Slayer so much. Oh. <laughs> I I do. Like there are some skills I have one twenties in where I'm just like, man, I I miss You know I what's really that. funny about that is I honestly prefer Reaper tasks now compared to Slayer tasks. <laughs> yeah, you're just missing out on the best skill in the game. I don't well, maybe second best now with archaeology, but I don't know, <laughs> Shane. All right. After many years of campaigning by peers, the level 29 defense requirement has been removed for ancient curses. The curses achievement now is temple at Santista as a prerequisite, and its description is now clearer about how to unlock ancient curses. Wow, I remember hearing about that. They are right. Many years. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about that grind. Do you remember that grind? Like... Well, you probably don't because you always did quest. Yeah. But like for somebody yeah. that was coming up, you know, later, um, you know, questing was a grind. Yeah, and, to and get it always to comes some of these rewards. Every quest after Priest and Peril that came out, I did on launch week. Okay, so yeah, you never had a <laughs> you never no, really had a quest. I never grind. had a quest grind. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, it's no longer possible to bypass the cooldown of a special attack by using the essence of finality. I don't know how someone would have done that, but, you know, too many special attacks is never good for your health. And the game should no longer lock you out when a patch bomb harvests a significant number of crops at one go. <laughs> oh, that's the that's the Shane uh, cooler right there. They're like, hmm. We're done here. The funny You're part not is fifty-seven herbs. The funny part is patch. I don't use patch bombs. Never oh, have. Okay. Never have. Oh. Oh. I'm a very traditionalist when it comes to the farming skill. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We didn't get God banter in like last week, so let's do that right now. 
uh, God Banter um, from uh, September 27th before uh, the Croesus front. And this, uh, we join uh, the four gods, Ceridomen, Saren, Zamorak, and Armadil, talking about the people who have died on the Croesus front. Ceridomen upset at Saren, saying, My guards been lie dead and defiled from following your orders. I will not be ignored. Um, Zamorak pipes in saying, well, Saren, you've achieved what few others in this have in all the ages of the world. You've rendered Saradoman speechless. And this is because Saren said to Saradoman, the least you could do is honor their sacrifice with some dignity. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> and Saradoman says, when this is over, there will be a trial. You have failed in every conceivable way, Saren, and you will answer for your... And, you know, this is Ser- Saradoman and Zamorak attempting to put the blame on Saren, but Armadil comes in, filling that Guthixian role, saying, we will answer, Saradoman. We have failed. Time and time again, we have allowed the mortal world to be torn apart by our conflicts. We have manipulated their needs, fears, and desires to garner their support. We have suppressed their will with our mere presence. Their lives are destroyed in our names, and we do nothing to prevent it. I feel like this is a change for Armadil, and it it really, I think, goes to show that once this is all said and done, there's going to need to be a big reckoning. Um between these four in terms of, you know, what what the hell has actually gone on here in terms of, oh, are these guys actually, you know, going to be able to come out of this on the other side intact in some way? Or are we going to oh, head off for something worse? We're, I, I think you have been on to it from day one. This is going to end with everyone gone. Yeah. All and, of them. And you know the, And we'll go back to a pre six stage. Right. And sense. and and you 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 you're channeling this nicely because there is something in the works currently through an extended production team at RSBNB update uh called what happens after the elder god wars ends for our next monthly bit. Hmm? So, we we've been paying attention to um all of this. And I'm going to move on to the dialogue uh, from this week now. But the biggest thing that comes out of this one is that Saren will be made to answer for all of this in the end. Because at the end of the 27th, the dialogue from the 27th, she says, So I will make decisions that must be made, and the burden will be mine to bear. The burden will be mine to bear. So keep that in mind. And I don't want to reveal too much about where we're going with this, but yeah. what we heard here on the 27th is really solidified in some of the things that we're thinking in terms of maybe Saren acting in a way that will be able to, in effect, prevent the inevitable world destruction that was alluded to in Battle of the Monolith. And... Everything else that's been being talked about with Sarah Doman and Zamorak going at each other, Armadil taking that role, um, that will all be addressed as well. But the dialogue from the fourth starts um, with Sarah Doman saying, tell me something, Zamorak. And you know what he says? Your hairline is most unflattering without the crown. <sighs> Can't you hold Zamorak your venomous fan. tongue for even a moment? What possessed the Empire to create something so dangerous as Croesus? The finest m- magical and scientific minds of the Second Age called the city home and nobody said anything? Zamorak says, I don't know. Sarah Dowen says, you're a liar. Why keep this from us now? And even Armadil thinks that Zamorak is hiding something because he says, you were... You were Legatus Maximus. It's hard to believe that such information was kept secret from you. And then Zamorak reiterates some stuff we, we learned in uh, the city of Santistan archaeology in that the empire ran itself. 
the military, church, and intelligence um, arms of it were set up as their own bits and bobs, and they ran autonomously and independently of one another, and they didn't actually speak to each other, and we learned that uh, in Centistan archaeology. Now, uh, continuing on with this, there, there just seems to be this weird discussion going on here about questions of, you know, why would you build such an empire and build such a thing like Croesus, and in particular, uh, Armadil asked, did Zaros build the greatest empire the world has ever seen, knowing that it would one day fail? Saren says, it's possible. To what end, I cannot say. Sarah Doman says, this is a festering wound. It is the blighted root of all that is wrong with the world. Sentistan must burn, and it starts here. Well, Armadil says, what about our people? Sarah Doman admits, we withdraw as many as we can. Then we set the whole graveyard to the torch. Saren says, if it were that easy, we would have already done so. Then they talk about Gorvek. Um, wielding the flame, you know, his dragon flame, of course, in, in order to uh, do that. And they mentioned something called the Fortress of Kelleran, um, which Sarah Doman doesn't remember. And Zamrak says, exactly. Now, I don't know that we have heard of that before, but Saren ends this one by saying, stand fast, Sarah Doman. Perhaps we need not reach for the pitch and tinder just yet. So, based on what we've heard over these past two weeks, um, we have all been working together to try and figure out what's going to end with this. And we have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen after the full front. And then right now we're just in the stages of wrapping up what's going to happen after uh, the ramifications of that. And potentially how we get to the next storyline, which is kind of alluded to uh, in the live stream from this week. But nonetheless, um, if you read between the lines of all this God dialogue, I think it's pretty easy to see uh, where things are going next. And we're going to try and uh, poke some of that uh, together inside our next monthly bit, which uh, we'll be recording next week. So should be some good fun, I think. Do um, you have any thoughts or theories before we thank some Patreon supporters? Um, yeah, I just had a thought, but I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's a going, it's something we're going to be covering, but what if they're trying to make, if they try to turn Croesus into their own weapon? I mean, it, it would corrupt anything, right? Yeah. It corrupt the eggs. Huh. Could Croesus corrupt the eggs? I mean, it's possible. It's possible they could do that. They're not but, destroying it right right out there. But if they did do people. that, you would still have the Elder Gods um, being very upset, I think. And, and that's something that uh, took a while for us to try and figure out how. But I, th I think we've come around with a way of, of doing that uh, successfully here. But that's an interesting thought. What's going to happen? You know, could you employ, you know, maybe in some way Croesus or maybe even the Glacier and Carapac? Who knows, right? Right. Like maybe that's yeah. something that could happen with this. Maybe we could uh, take control of these ones again. That's an interesting thought. Um, chuck that in the in the group chat where we're using that at some point or discussing that. So. Okay. All right. Uh, this week, as it is the first week of the month, we have some extra people to thank. In particular, this week, I would like to thank Amos Reed, Andrew C., Arvids L., Brock H., Kristen S., Chunk the Monk, Cook Me Plocks, Diana, Drama Free, Duramax, Free Milk, Gila Fleur, Jade Gizmo, Jason S., Jeebus, Jesse W., Jim M., Kesky, Kevin G., Lucky Ducky, Malinoric, Nate the Great, Renhawk, Ricky A, Ripeth, Samuel FL, Scott DS, Snub Eve, Tanner JW, The Bears OP, The Naked Captain, The Lion, Tom V, and Zant. Thank you all of you for your support. It does truly mean the world to us. We are closing in on that $200 a month mark where every Patreon supporter who opts into it will receive a special mail out. We're currently at 180 so if you want to help us along with this path that you know people 
who might be willing to do that, just uh, point them to patreon.com slash rsbnp. There you gain, for as little as a dollar a month, um, access to the entire back catalog of monthly bits, and you help fund the cost for hosting and production of RSBNB Update. For $3 a month, you'll get a special VIP rank on our Discord and access to high-quality stereo versions of the show. And for $5 a month, you'll receive a shout-out on each and every week of the podcast, and you'll gain exclusive access to the clips that we use to make the clip show at the end of the year. And, of course, I mentioned the 200 mark, but should we ever reach 500 for some absurd reason, we will take the Hot Ones Challenge. And it occurs to me I forgot to ask Thaxi if he would be interested in, in a spicy experience at some point down the line. I think, but, I think he he said maybe. Oh, okay. I thought. Well, I know we got lots of other people who would jump in, like Parnassius, but I, I, I think the bulk of the... I think the bulk of the emphasis is on you and me, based on what people want to see. So yeah, they want to, they want to, they want to see me cry, and <laughs> and, and they will, um, and they will not be tears of joy. <laughs> oh God, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> uh, but if you want to help us out with that, check out patreon.com slash rsbnb. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, guys. All right, so. We had a bit of a a mod Q and A this week. Uh, mods Mike Osborne and uh, Pi with Mod Hooli hosting, and they had a discussion about a lot of things. A lot of things that uh, the community had been talking about. Um, let's run through some of these because I, I I think we need to have a discussion on some of them. So questions about uh, dead clicks, lock lockout problems, and click boxes. What's being done to stop this from happening and the answer to this is that apparently there's a lot of work happening behind the scenes on back-end server things for responsiveness the game save database after the login lockouts account supports beta servers how things are tested and the systems are quite old and the work going on to overhaul these systems is being done while the game is still running and they also pointed out that there's been a 99.9% game uptime since the login lockout, which, you know, makes total sense because you you really can't count the weekly um, updates as downtime because those are prescribed most times. You know, when you see 99.9% on a, on a server farm that we have 99.9% uptime, that basically means that... A, that only forecasts against uh, unforeseen uptimes. So that's where they're getting that 99.9% number out is that um, game reboots don't count for that. Nothing really surprised me with that one. And, you know, the next question has to be hammered home, and I'm going to hammer it home right now talking about bugs. In particular, about the Elder God Wars dungeon bugs, Maud Osborne reiterated, Elder God Wars dungeons are developed by separate teams. <clears throat> and the people who work on one specific front are going to stay on that front after it launches and keep fixing bugs. And we knew this going back to Carapac, and it's just a question mm -hmm. of when will the community accept this, I think. Yeah, um... And to my knowledge, I mean, what it doesn't seem like there's any game breakers, right? No, I mean, and you know, uh, if you if you look down the list and you nail down the things people are really after, that they want voice lines for the glacier, they want more achievements for the glacier, they want logs for the glacier, those kind of things. Well, those things are not bugs, um, right? Right. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> Yeah, you're right in the very technical sense that they're not bugs. They're omissions, but players treat them as bugs because they expect them. But that's not a bug. That's a but that's not a bug. That's not that's not how bugs work. Yeah. Like and you know, for me a bug it's something that is uh to the detriment of the game that's unintentional. That's what I define as a bug, personally. 
Yeah. Uh, well, and yeah, I don't look. I would love for the glacier to have voice lines. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. That'd be real good. But I, I, I don't think of that as a bug. Right. And, and it's a piece of ice, and you have to ask, how does it talk? <laughs> well, I mean, to me, there's time for that, right? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not. You know, I'm I'm not in an uproar about that. For me, a, a bug would be like if you, you know, ate a rock till soup and then drink a brew, you you fall over, do three spins, and die. That's a pretty big bug. Yeah. Um. You know. So, but something like that, or like um bugs that we saw back in the day in God Wars Dungeon Two, where people could just save spot, AFK certain bosses. Yep forever um that was a legitimate bug um these are just yeah like you said they're they're missing features yeah yeah uh we just need to underscore that that the fronts are developed by separate teams and as a result the people who develop one front are going to stay on that front for a while after it launches to address those kind of things that's how this has been structured and I don't know who needs to hear that, but if you're one of those people who needs to hear that, you heard it on the stream this week, and we're re- reiterating it. Although, you know, there's one interesting thing with that, Shane. What's that? What did we just read off as part of the ninja strike? That was that was actually general patch notes. Sorry, I should have been more clear <laughs> that the first bit was ninja strike okay. and the second bit was patch note. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I kind of went from for one into. I kind of went from <laughs> from one into the other there, didn't I? Oh, there we go. Okay, cleared up. That makes more sense. I was just going because <laughs> I had the groove with it. Yeah, you had the groove, man. <laughs> um. Then a question came up about uh, um, click boxes for things like archaeology spots and the glacier, and what actually happened with that is that part of an NXT update made it so that you would actually only be able to click on the specific model. But there's actually going to be an update in the near future that will make it easier to click on things like that by expanding those boxes. Um, we saw that at Croesus. Hopefully that's going to be addressed by this, but apparently archaeology hotspots are involved, uh, Glacier hitboxes. I wonder if Carapax hitboxes are going to be involved in that too. Apparently that's coming in the upcoming Monday uh, game update. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. That's a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Ah, next they talked about the Sand Casino. Will RS3 remove the dual arena like OSRS is going to? Um, they've actually been working in tandem with the OSRS team on this, and in the cu- next couple of the weeks there will be more news on this. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. What? You don't think they they should remove the Sand Casino? I think they'll lose a lot of highfalutin players. That's when you, if if you're done, done, done with the game, that is only real like excitement and fun people do. Um, and and see, that's yeah, yeah, part of the game know. we never really venture into. We don't, but I I do know. I mean, I know people that play the Kansas City Casino all the time, um, but they're they're by all rights done with the game. There's just nothing left to really do, um, and so making money See, comes easy, and they just you raise a very good casino. point. They can do this in old school because their party hats are relatively cheap, but. If you look at the sand casino people and if these people quit, how many of those party hats are you going to take further out of the game circulation with that? That's an well, interesting question. That, I mean, these are most of the people down there with that kind of money. I mean, they're accomplished players. Yeah. I don't know. I. I have a feeling it's going to be more complicated to do an RS3 than old school, given what we're just discussing here. Yeah, and I mean, you know, on the other hand, is there some way to, I mean, I guess we can't really age limit it, right? No. uh, 
that's that's the problem, right? That's where the rubber meets the road here, and yeah. and the two things we got to balance. Yeah. Uh, this led into the question: Is there a death cost rework? Uh, Mod Pi says there's discussions. Uh, there's a design for it, but nothing definite to say as of yet. All right. Okay. Um, it's something that Ninja Team has also been looking at, and that the whole the dev team wants to be looking at as well. And Mod Hooli says that the free death weeks that they've been doing have actually spurred a conversation about this, and there's something planned in November related to free death weeks. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. And, you know, my theory on this with Croesus and the Glacier, um, and we touched briefly on it last week, is that the aim seems to be twofold, is that you decrease the cost of PVM supplies with the three fronts so far, and you kind of lower death costs as well. Granted, you're not going to be able to affect armor and whatnot like that, but this is a big part of the equation. So it'll be interesting to see what they announce in November on this. Um, I know I definitely enjoy uh, free death weeks. I know I went streaking at the Glacier on Sunday. Um, I didn't Shane, do, wasn't I, that cold? Yeah, it was, and I and I didn't do too well. But I mean, I I got to see what it was like, and I learned that you know I'm going to need to um, next time I try this rope more defensive in, um, get the mechanized chinchampa for the minions and whatnot, amongst other things. So uh, it was a good learning experience. All right, Maybe well. next time we'll head to real Telos or Raksha. Next free I'm death telling week. you, Shane. I think I think you could do Telos. I do. Hmm. All right. Um, then we had some surprising news. Uh, the player avatar rework project is currently on hold temporarily, while focusing on RuneScape Mobile and the Elder God Wars campaign. They took this decision to make sure that the key releases took priority. There will likely be a player avatar refresh beta so that players can see just how the uh, new and old content meshes together with the new character models and the old armor and whatnot. And they say to expect more uh, news towards the end of the year, and it's currently in the proof of concept phase. Well, that's probably smart. Um, This is going to be a BFD, and... You know how people were with just capes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Beta probably server. the right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. And it looks like we were right again because the uh, store bundles and promotions came up because these have been experiments with direct purchase. The skilling bundle was an example of this, as was the charity event this week, and feedback is being monitored on it and what this is is that um from october 10th until the 24th you can get the um blueprint uh for all which is a bundle that has the stone of meditation 15 pulse cores 15 cinder cores 5 medium protein packs 10 protein power ups 10 combat dummies three large skill dummy crates and one death touch dart and this will be able to be purchased for the price of a bond and all proceeds will go to charity. But the other bundles and this one, they're experiments with their, with direct purchase. Mm-hmm. We knew that. Yep. Um, it, it, it was fairly obvious. If you, you know, just look at it from a business angle, and, you know, what players have been asking for in terms of, you know, effectively trying to find a way to get rid of Treasure Hunter. This is the next logical step. Direct purchase. I know you've been a big proponent of that in the past. I know lots of people as well don't like it. And I think it's at the point now where if these bundles start to sell well and if they took it even one step further up and added more XP to the bundle... We could really start to um, have some serious discussion about whether or not these are going to stick around. Yeah, I'm. I'm afraid with it being in the guise of these bundles that perhaps they won't prove as uh, as as financially viable as is what I hoped. Um, 
I'm glad that uh, there's some experimentation here, but I feel like why go through the dog and pony show when you have the marketplace and we have oddments? Um, so I, what are you saying? Just put put up a crate with you know with um, oddments. Oh, with, with oddments. because okay. because the because the some of the items, um, you know, we talked about on the show, and when you broke it down, they weren't really problems. But at first glance, they were enough to make people have a knee-jerk reaction, right? Um, versus everything on the marketplace in the oddment store is is kind of tried and tested, right? Like, um, yeah, we, we know what it is, and people accept that it's there. So like, here's another yeah. idea: put together a bundle, um, put three stars in it. Three smoldering lamps and five thousand oddments. See how well that sells. That is an XP bundle. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, and uh, actually, you know what just, it is? And I just it want is to make not one... an XP bundle. It's a time saver. Yeah. It's a time egg, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Exactly. And I just want to make one thing very clear with this. I personally would not use aim to progress my account like that but i know people who would and the reason i say to put a bundle out like that is to see how well it sells to see what people are after and then based on that you can have that discussion about do you do this or do you just ramp up on treasure hunter promotions like the one we have this week that is basically smoldering laps plus plus And, you know, uh, that's the future of monetization for the game. We've talked about it before, and, and you know, I, I think a lot of people want to go back to this um, No Treasure Hunter era, and I think that'd be wonderful. There was an opportunity uh, to do that with the changes made. But we need to be aware that in most games there is going to be that form of monetization, and we have to ask and question uh, would cosmetics be enough? And at this point, I don't think it would. So you need to have a discussion about, have we reached the point in RS3 where we can comfortably start talking about doing this? And I think that's the point we're at. And the team is learning internally based on how well all these different bundles are going to sell, whether or not direct purchase is something that the community um, will accept. And you raised the question about, you know, why didn't you go one step further with this? And I think the, my answer to that is that if you put, if you made it solely about XP, like I suggested you could do, I think people would have jumped on that with no questions asked. But peop, but I think they want to see these bundles that they put out, these three bundles with the um, skilling enhancement items to see where those fall as a baseline. And then based on that, you can make the assumption that XP would just do some magnitude better than that, I think. And I think that's I mean, why maybe. they haven't done it the way you uh, have laid out. And, and I mean, I guess that, I guess that um, makes sense. You know, on one hand, um, even the items that I, at first glance, thought were questionable um, really wouldn't be questionable in any other game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've and I've and I'm really getting to the point to where um, I just don't mind this stuff at all because I'm just playing my game. Um, I don't have the time that I used to. Uh, I am the kind of person that you know. Right now, we're trying to get all 120s. Um, that is a, it's a long road. Not you know. I mean, you're not going to want to use some stars. Something like that. If you're doing 120 divination, come on now. Yeah, you're gonna want to do that. Yeah, um, or 200 mils, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, and I just, I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I've never had a big problem with it. And at this point, I've got fatigue over the same, you know, arguments. And and I'm thinking, let's just rip the bandaid off. Um, yeah. Yeah. Try it and see how it goes. Like, wouldn't that be an interesting thing? Just try direct purchase for a month and stop Treasure Hunter? 
Uh, granted, they can't do it because they don't know how well it's going to work and they need the cash flow. But wouldn't it be an interesting thing just to see what the perception would be? But I think it it. But with the changes that have been made to Treasure Hunter, I mean, they've they've taken out. They haven't necessarily taken out chance, but they've they made it transparent, right? For yeah. The most part. So the it would have to do better, right? Like if yeah. if people people that are participating in Treasure Hunter right now kind of know what they're going to get. Especially when it's those class stuff and and all that. So if you are if you know that, then the only way the only place to go is up because people aren't buying treasure yeah, and keys for any prize you crap. get that you don't want. Oddments that becomes exactly. XP. Yes. Yeah. Um. Just to kind of uh, hone on hone in on this a bit more, they did also say that items like portables could eventually become available. Uh, through invention as well, and that would be good. Yeah, and overloads in that bundle we were talking about. Um, they said they weren't removed because the pack was on sale for a limited time. There were issues with how it was done, in terms of is it a skilling bundle if there are items like the overloads in there? And the answer was that the team wanted to include things that the players would value. No, so the answer was the team thought we better put something in here for PVMers, or none of them's gonna buy yeah. it. But they were and just, they you know, money. but they were just regular plain Jane overload flasks. Right, and that's what I—that's what I'm saying. Like when it comes to other games, an item like that's that, what you would see. Um, y- yes, yes, that's why I'm just like, eh, you know. But at first glance, as a traditional quote runescape player um you go oh i don't know about that like that might be a little a bridge too far yeah um now when we dug into it you know it it wasn't um it was just that knee-jerk reaction again right right and so um you know i don't know my my thing with is that i don't think that that is effective in RuneScape as much as it is in the other games. Um, because what's an overload really going to do for you in this game? Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that's gone in one hour of PVM. Yeah, but if you don't have the other equipment and the other levels to go along with it, what real use is that going to be to you? Exactly. And and I think that's probably the main disconnect that was there, if anything. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on. Uh, there was also discussion about uh, buffs for Malia tier 95. <laughs> I almost didn't put this one in because I, I don't think this is needed. Um, they said if anything... Was this a serious it, question? Apparently. Um, if anything, it would be added to just a single tier. Um, now, the next question was interesting. When will all three styles be equal in damage for the combat triangle? Uh, Mod Pi said that each uh, one being equal and perfect balance would make a really boring combat system. And going forward, each of the styles is going to be aimed to be good at a different thing. Melee will be for your burst damage. Ranged will be good for consistent damage and damage over time attacks. And Magic will be aimed at having the best utility, which we've seen in terms of the emerging tank class. Mm-hmm. He also said that they're not finished with Mage. There's a few other things that they could do. Um, in particular things that have been designed, but they're holding back in particular. Uh, we'll get to exactly what this was after, or no, I'll just say it now. Uh, it was a replacement for four tick auto attacking. To the point. Replacement for four tick auto attacking is four tick auto attacking. Yeah. And I, I, I see thought that, they already see that's, did that. Well, no, uh, they want to they wanted to do it in a way that, you know, would be learnable. And they said it would affect auto attacks in all, in all of the combat types. So it add yet another layer on top of it, which mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I don't know that you want to do mm-hmm. that, honestly. <laughs> no, no. Why? You can't fix one thing and break three others. Like, uh. I don't know. I'm in the camp Come that I on. hope it doesn't arrive whatever they were talking about it doesn't sound like it is necessary (laughs) 
how many times have we been told we can't have something because it's too much time? It's too expensive. But yeah, we can. Th this could be a priority. Well, I think that's the reason they haven't put it out yet. Well, and I hope it no it doesn't. Yeah, because, I hope it doesn't see the light of day. Yeah, it, it doesn't make much sense to me. Yeah. All right. Um, sneak peeks for 2022? Question mark. And the answer to this was: Look at 2021. It's got the mod mic recipe, which is a mix of combat, skilling, questing, and serving other player types at specific frequencies. 2021 can be seen as a test bed where where it worked out well using the Elder God Wars dungeon as an episodic content release. Imagine this in 2022, but just better. Mm -hmm. And with this, there will be some bits of the Elder Gods that will run into next year. Okay. So it means we're not going to have full completion on it, but yeah. we'll have most of it done. Yeah. Um, environment reworks are on the table, but they need to blend in with narratives and quests in game. I feel like we've heard that before, so no surprise there. And the way they want to do this from Mod Osborne is what he has always said, is that RuneScape is at its best when it surprises you week by week and month by month. And putting out something like a huge landmass and then waiting for updates on it really doesn't do that. And that was Anachronia without mentioning it in, in particular. Instead, moving through a specific landmass has more value to a game, in particular ones he named off were things like Karamja, the Ardoin area, Missilin, so on and so forth. In other words, we should have released a full expansion at the same time. And, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like that's an answer that should be yes, but I feel like that expansion is another toxic word. It is, but I mean, <laughs> potato, potato. All uh, right. Will there be a breather in next year's plans, or will it continue to be epic storylines like this year? Uh, Mod Osborne admits that there's not enough character-driven storyline. Zamorak, Saradoman, Lumbridge, Farak. Will we kick it down a notch? Yes, he says. We'd love to do that. Whether or not we pull back completely from the storytelling and what's going to happen and this is the important part, is going to segue nicely into the next story. It will be different and hit many different notes and will happen almost immediately. Wink, wink. I hope it's... See, I hope this is related to, like... I, I hope we get more into the human kingdoms. Uh -huh. or, or just the, the kingdoms on Gilinor yeah. and, and the intrigue. Yeah. Um, I think that's where factions. we're going. I hope so. Yeah. So I, I hope that's where we're going as well. Uh, in regards to 2022 roadmap, Mod Mike says that they are aware that they need to be a bit more transparent with their plans in terms of what uh, should be done. And Mod Osborne still maintains that he'd love uh, to strip away the culture um, that prevents developers from worrying about if uh, they should talk about something or whether or not uh, they should say something. And I feel like we've been down this road before where they they always used to say too much. They, this is the constant pendulum um, that they are on, right? Um, it's in, just in constant motion. I thought they kind of had a really good mix this year. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I actually thought this was a good mix. I, I don't like nothing but surprises, um, but I also don't like... It's too much too early where people can just derail everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've, I've enjoyed the way they've done it this year. And my only uh, complaint would be from a player's perspective, not necessarily the content creator's perspective, but from the player's perspective, I don't like it when we um, put all the drops out the week before one of the boss fronts comes out. But that was really good for us yeah. um, on the fronts, I will say. You know, I think the only reason that that has been done is to try to somewhat minimize the crazy fluctuations that can happen on um, combat supplies and drop related. Oh, okay. So kind um, of things you know, like get that the ideas out there, even it, yeah, in front of people. I, that's my theory. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
Um, and in regards to actually doing more things, it's that things are actually returning to normal. They'll be using the studio for more things. Um, there's more meetings happening in the office in terms of a return to normal on this. And they hope to be able to do RuneFest and special events again, maybe next year, though no uh, firm commitment on that. Um, then we took a bit of a side road and talked a bit about communications and uh, the community management team. Maud Miva is a new senior community manager who will be making an introduction in the near future who kind of fulfills the role that Maud Porky and Maud uh, Shawnee used to fill. And it can be seen as though that Maud Hooley is filling the role on the communication side and communication strategy that Maud JD used to fill. So we'll be getting an introduction on that in the near future. I thought that was interesting. It was definitely interesting, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it sounds like, but I, it sounds like we'll have a more, um, a fuller, more complete community team. Yeah, fingers crossed. Of, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, when will we get a new woodcutting update or a new hatchet? And this was weird. Apparently, there are some quirks in the way that hatchets are coded in the game, and it's not a, not easy to add a new one in on top. Um, and now these are exact quotes, Mott, what Mott Osborne says. He says he said, I would love to branch out on this, maybe with something similar to construction contracts. Do you get that? Branch out for woodcutting? Okay, so... <laughs> right, okay. But... We're going to have to do that with a tier 70 axe or hatchet forever because of spaghetti code? No, that's not acceptable. I agree. That, that's, yeah, no, that's not acceptable. But you see what they did with this? They effectively made it cutting elders faster by adding the offhand with the crystal. Right. And. Well, yeah. I mean. If anything, this Croesus would have been the time to add the add the next tiers of Hatchet. Well, but it, I guess like they sounded very firmly committed to not doing this with this this week here on the live stream. Right, but it it can't stay that way forever. I mean, it just can't. Um, and and it doesn't make any sense because you have a you have a a tier ninety pickaxe they put out uh, the hammer so the only way i can think of that making sense from the development side is if for each type of tree in game the specific way the hatchet each hatchet works on that tree is coded directly into it which mean would mean that you would effectively need to rewrite the woodcutting skill because the only two hatchets that were added into game ever were the dragon hatchet and the crystal hatchet. Wow. Okay. Because okay, so we need to do wood rework. All no, right. you need to rewrite the woodcutting skill, and I think that's what the answer behind the scenes is on this. But they didn't want to say that. Hmm. Thinking about it now. So, um, is there any plan to make uh, Dungeoneering groups accessible to Iron Man? They say currently Iron Man can run Elite Dungeon 1 and 3 to achieve the same thing. Uh, the Ninja team is actually looking at this. There's a design, but no question about when or if it might actually happen. Now, they some... really should do that. That's got to be the worst for Iron Man. Yeah, and I mean, I mean obviously with, with Iron Man being able to fight Croesus, you want to you might as well just allow them to do group skilling activities in general, right? Well, yeah, and it's not like, I mean, sure, you're going to get your Dungeoneering tokens, but you're not carrying anything else yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody wants more clarity when it comes to combat calculations. Mod Pi says that he wishes he could do this. He wishes he could give clarity. They don't have time for clarity, because there is the right line between too much and not enough information that is different for each player. 
And that's that, true. Yeah. But I don't know if it, I don't know if that's true in this regard. What do you think about that? Like, it seems like this is one of the more number heavy parts of the game. Yeah, it is. And my answer to this is that, um, we're going to do something with this on, uh, the elder God Wars fronts when this is done. And maybe that can be a jumping off point for, um, other episodes that I, I actually already have a working name in, in mind for this. It's called theory crafting with Baxi and David. Oh, okay. <laughs> because, you know, you put those two together, you can basically say, Hey, how does this work? You can work out some numbers and how, to, how to best, you know, work that in any bosses. You combine those two people and you have, and you have basically what this person was asking mod pipe for. Right. Yes, you have total so, meta mayhem. Yeah. So, oh, that's another good idea. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, you could even have a backing sound to that. There we go. <laughs> Write that down. I, I, okay. We might have to use that. Uh, somebody was wondering if uh, the essence of finality will ever be available to be used in legacy mode. And the answer is that legacy mode will never be balanced. <sighs> Systems don't sit side by side. There's different damage profiles for each. Um, the average DPM can be pushed closest, closer together. It's not balanced about, around the most optimal revolution plus plus bar. And essence of finality was made as an ability within the EOC system. It's not a no, but it would be very difficult. And in particular... They say they want to push people towards revolution at this point and not legacy mode. So legacy mode is likely going to stay as is. Good, I y guess. Yeah, like, you know, I think we're going to get to a point within five years or so where we'll see legacy mode removed, honestly. You know, but I'm, at a, I'm of the mind of, um, I mean, if it isn't taking away from anything else, I don't True. really care that it exists. True. True. Um, and, in, and in some ways... You know, fighting things like the Calphite Queen, um, the Dagonoth Kings, those pre-EOC bosses, legacy mode works great. Yeah. So there's that, yeah. too. Now, in regards to the four-tick auto-attacking, we already talked about them having a potential uh, replacement. And the biggest concern for Mod Pi is that it's in the background and it's unlearnable. And... The solution, in his word, takes a long, hard look at where auto attacks appear in the combat system. I say just remove it entirely and don't bring the replacement in. I mean, we've we've said that for a long time, yeah. but um, and you know what though, if there was a time to do it, it probably would be now since magic is now it, it's the tank skill and not the meta for. DPS, which it was yeah. when Fortic Auto Attack yeah. came to be. Yeah. No. So no one would probably care, as long as I don't mess with range. Right. At this point. Uh, the next combat question was thoughts on more ring slots, since we obviously have ten fingers and can only wear one ring. <laughs> Man's got a point. Yep. Uh, they said they're not going to rule out, and it breaks down to, to discussion. First at the, is that the ring slot is currently held hostage by the Ring of Death, which means that you should probably do something with the Ring of Death to add more choice to whether or not you use it. And it's the age-old question of Switchscape, and at what point in the skill curve do you bring this in? It's not a no, but they're in general happy with where things are at right now. Well, I, I can help you with that. You want choice with the Ring of Death? when they bring about their death rework. Now you have some choice, right? Rather yeah. You'll, you know, it's efficient to do that, or do you want to do your luck of the dwarves? Do, what, what have you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, survival guides, like we saw with Croesus, will be uh, part of content going forward. That includes lists of known issues, and the team is doing this in order to have a centralized uh, Jagex location for posting information so that they're not always uh, posting it uh, on the subreddit. And with this, they also want to use social media as more to talk to players rather than just using it as a pro promotion mechanism. Hmm. If they only had like a a site or something that they could post stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's been the number one thing for years that we've been saying, honestly. 
Uh, then the big question, can we expect further skilling bosses? Mod Osborne enthusiastically said, yes, absolutely. Croesus and Big Game Hunter were really valuable for learning what players want in terms of solo skilling boss intrinsicy. Or intricacy. Um, so there we have it. Yep. Big Game Hunter looped into the skilling boss kind of idea. Uh-huh. Then somebody asked, will there be more elite skills? And the team is leaning more towards traditional skills rather than elite skills after seeing all the interactions that were created with archaeology. Yeah, it, it, that just it makes, makes sense. sense. That just makes sense, yes. Yeah. Absolutely, I think. So. All right. So, people are still salty about the font change. And we talked about it being the true type font system uh, to make display of font easier at different devices. And that's exactly what was reiterated in the live stream here for different devices and different font sizes. And then this was a really, really, really sour note in the live stream for me. And I'm going to read this. In terms of accessibility, all of these things take a bit of time. There are experts on the team who, quote, need, who know what needs to happen. And the team is pushing forward on things like general level of accessibility for people with visual and auditory impairments. Looking at colorblind modes, and it may take some time to get right. I don't know if that was as sour for me as it could be for you. Well, I mean, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> but no. Put simply, I, I, I'm, I'm if not. the person was on the team, we shouldn't have had the problems we had with Karapak, the Glacier. And here's the worst. Process. Here's... Battle of the Monolith. We shouldn't have had these problems. No. And here's here's I don't I don't know so there there's something doesn't make sense to me here because like the, we just talk, hang on I just want to say one simple thing how do you uh -huh. put particles on a boss that a colorblind person cannot see if you have experts in the team who know what's going on with this how does that happen and it wasn't even the first time in in Elder God Wars that there had been a colorblind issue. We we brought it up with Carapac as well. Yeah. Um but here's here's the problem. Oh yeah, right. You couldn't see the color between the different lightning, right? No. Yeah. Exactly. So we've talked with Mod Warden. We've talked with Mod Osborne. I believe them to be genuinely concerned about accessibility. They're not They've lying. They've listened to me. They're not lying. So I don't understand where this disconnect is because I, I, I do believe that. The higher-ups um, want to do it. We know that. Yes. Much. Yes. So and that's why people I'm saying don't it, know to this. me it seems and like there isn't on. someone there. Right. People don't know this. Before and after each of the podcasts we had Warden and Osborne on, we talked to them at length with how we were producing that show. And, of course, on both of those, accessibility came up. Mm -hmm. They wanted documents from you on how on your opinion on things, and you gave those. So yeah. people cannot blame Mod Warden, Mod Osborne, those types of people. Because, just like you, I genuinely believe that they see the problem and they want to fix it. But the question is, like you said, where is the disconnect? Yeah. I like you. It, it's hard for me to believe that there are experts that are on these teams. Um, you know, I I just don't I I don't see that because, like I said, the 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 things that have come up hey, you don't get are you, not you don't just get visual. more colorblind than messing up red and green. Well, it, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. I mean, that's pretty bad, but. Um, 
but there's been things with with color blindness, but there's been things with visual clutter. But there have been things too that were auditory. There were things that have been cognitive and 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 mobility related. Um, right, and we need to also underscore that just accessibility isn't issue. just visual and auditory. It's the entire spectrum, like you mentioned. Y- yeah, I've even heard yeah. from people who have dyslexia that the best way of taking in some of the things in game is through listening to the podcast. Yes, because well, and there are some parallels, right, um, with things that visual that help visually impaired people also can also help dyslexic people. Um, you know, namely having those auditory cues, um, not having to read uh, or be quite so text heavy are, are two things that come to mind. Um, I, I I just, like I said, it, it's hard for me to see where these experts lie because I, I and, and I mean lie like where they are at. I don't know where they are on the team because yeah. um, it, I, I would love to talk with them. I mean, come come forward let's let's do a live stream let's Talk have about accessibility let's That'd have be- a let's have just like we did with um as an Andre's quest or the mod warden we will give any accessibility person at jagex uh an hour of time and we'll work with you and we'll produce something talking about how you work accessibility into the game what happened with the elder god wars front where you've been where you're going, how we could do better. Uh, now, that would be a fun yeah. conversation to have, I think. Well, that would be a, a constructive conversation to have, right? Because, um, like I said earlier in the show, I think my credit's good. I I always say when things are done right, and I try to, yes, I say when they're wrong, but I'm, I try to uh, provide some kind of constructive feedback. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, while I know it, it feels negative that that is from I'm at a frustration point at this right now because we are three fronts in we're three bosses in and I never had high expectations to be able to do it. I don't expect to ever to be on the same you know level is is um, you know a normal PVM or at the same time I think I should be able to participate in these things and not have barriers right and the Um, way you were able to get your kills with the glacier carapac croesus was through our group pvm stuff yes yes and i will i will say um you know croesus was you know with the exception of of what i called out um on accessibility um you know i was able to find a short path i was able to pretty much navigate it and and nullify the um mechanics by um you know by using crystal mask and different things having things called out to me um when they were called out i was on it um, but that just goes to show you how much an audio cue could do, yeah, or how much you know little things, right? Because that you know, two of the smoke colors are uh, red and green. <laughs> well, of course they are, <laughs> you know. But having Thaxi to be able to to call out that mechanic, then I'm able to, you know, run away or I'm able to do whatever. Um, that could have easily been done with. Um, you know, in game with yeah. different sounds. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I would love to talk to, to who these experts are. Um, you know, I'm, they're experts, so they probably know more than, than I do, but I would love to, uh, to try to help, um, if, you know, if possible. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the criticism we're giving is, comes from a place of wanting to do good. Um, because we we yeah. we we've been the we've been through the entire round here on this on this episode, haven't we? We criticized we, really Jags, we <laughs> said they did something good that the community probably didn't think was good, and now we're back to the other side again. So there you have it. Hey, so, straight talk, right? That's straight that's in the name. That's, that's in the do. name. <laughs> that's in the name. All right. Uh, continuing on, will there be a yearly survey? Um, not this year. 
because they need to do it right. And um, the previous surveys were written by Maude Osborne, and he uh, right out there said that he's not a professional survey writer. And, and, you know, that makes sense. If you're doing a survey at this point in the game style or age, you definitely want to do it uh, from a proper data analytics standpoint. So that's good. Yeah. And how many have we seen where they were kind of ambiguous yeah. and, yeah. you know, just felt a little weird on some, <laughs> with some questions? Yeah. Um, what about the issue of max cash or platinum tokens or anything on that same vein? Uh, Mod Mike says they have nothing definite at this point. The concern is that they can overcomplicate things and the economy is really important. This is an issue that will run well into next year. Um, apparently there's also been a couple of economists in the, that they brought into the company looking at cash flow, inflation, and a death rework. And Mod Timbo has moved full time onto this question. Thank God it's Mod Timbo. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. As uh, the episode title, Once Upon a Time, was In Timbo We Trust. <laughs> Still reigns true today, I think. Still reigns true. <laughs> Uh, will there be Halloween and Christmas events this year? Yes. Uh, in-game RuneFest, they'd like to do it, but there's lots of challenging things with it. And can you hint at what the next storyline will be? They said we could, but that would cause lots of chaos. And it was at this point that Mod Osborne shook his head. <laughs> side to side, not up and down, I should say. So there we have it. There we have it. There is the live stream from this week. Uh, lots of uh, fun little tidbits that we were able to pull on. Um, let us know what your favorite was, how you guys feel about these things, about this live stream. It's been a while since we've had one of these, and I think it's good to um, have this discussion. But we're going to answer some questions right now that have been uh, piling up. So first one is from Probably Writing. Do you think that the World Guardian is going to get to punch Saren? <laughs> I know I've been talking with you behind the scenes, probably writing, and I think the answer to this question is no, because Saren is going to be indisposed doing something else um, after the full front. Um, and, not to mention, there's this whole like thing nowadays where I don't think it's a good look to, I mean... Saren is kind of portrayed as feminine, right? Like she's yeah. the female. Is, yeah. Yes. Probably wouldn't play well to punch her in the face. Yeah. Just, yeah. just say it. Uh, what's the headlines? In An general, MMO RPG promotes violence against women. <laughs> in general, I think the one who is no. probably uh, going to be exerting his anger on the entire situation is Zaros, and it'll just be an interesting question to see who gets in the way of that. So I'm going to leave that one there and leave that, that to the time. monthly bit. Um, Bick holding the highest contempt for intelligent life is interesting thoughts. Yeah. So we have these elder gods and they're seen as, you know, in general cosmic entities to that point. And with that, the fun part, I think, that comes out of all of this is that we're trying to apply a certain lens of perception to them, right? Mm -hmm. But in reality, our character doesn't understand them just like we don't understand them. Um, there's, that, there's that quote that any um, farly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, right? Right, yes. And that's probably the same kind of thing that goes on here, is that we're barely even able to understand what these Elder Gods represent. And based on what they're seeing in terms of what has been created, um, and in particular, maybe the whole thing that the Zarosians in Sintistan in the Second Age created with Croesus, I think that it actually makes a lot of sense because if you look at Bick holding int intelligent life in the greatest contempt, you have a empire in the second age that created this big giant plant fungus thing that, you know, was designed to be a weapon, but 
Bick is has been said to be ineffectively, and we don't have any real confirmation of this, the elder god of nature and whatnot. And I, I forget that. I, I think that's the exact uh, term around it. But nonetheless, what people did with Croesus, I think, would definitely infuriate um, infuriate Bick. So I, I think it makes total sense that you know they're like probably thinking why would why would intelligent life do this in particular and create this thing and what what in our name have we created that is running around through this world now because they tried to create remember the the whole story behind these things is they create these worlds and they stop when they create something that they see as uh, perfection right so it would make sense why they could hold something like that in contempt, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, the intelligent life is always exploiting nature, right? Yeah. Molding it, yeah. changing it, destroying it. Yeah. Um, so to me, yeah, that would make perfect sense if Bic is the one that it's most associated with. With alteration nature. in Earth, to be honest, mm-hmm. is the actual uh, description on that. So, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense and it's it's really raising the question about what where we go after uh with all these elder gods in particular and are we ever going to be able to reason with them and i'm overall leaning towards the answer of that being no i think so but it, it's definitely an, an an interesting thought because we are seeing this through the lens of the generals on the field and the gods in the cathedral and we're experiencing it by going into each of these boss fights. But you also have to remember that there's higher, this higher up level that we really, really don't know much about. But when you think about it on the whole, I I think it makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, if you have something that's purely nature, imagine, imagine the earth, for example, um, before um you know any complicated life existed and it was just you know ferns and plants right right yeah perfect example of purity in the eyes of bick all right next one is from tycho dear rsp and b no long long time no see i've i've recently returned to rs3 after a break of six months and during my absence i've noted that the world is about to end or at least it will if we don't succeed can't a Gielinor, or can't Gielinor catch a break without the world guarding and having to correct anything? Anyways, today I have two questions. First, what do you consider to be the best update of 2021? And second, which update of 2021 do you consider to be the best for new players? Looking forward to hearing your answers, and may the RNG be with you. Ah, best update of 2021. You know, for me, in all honesty, it's got to be City of Sintistan. Okay. The quest. Definitely. That's definitely fair. Okay. Um, For me, it was the official release of mobile on okay. iOS. All right. Yep. All right. If I was going to expand this to the top five, uh, City of Sintistan Quest, Sintistan Archaeology, uh, Croesus is going to be in there despite accessibility problems, mm-hmm. and mobile, of course. Yeah, and I, I would probably be, I would probably add um, Sintistan Archaeology. That was anything archaeology. Yeah, I got it. Because included. it was just such a welcome yes. breath of fresh air. It took us back yeah. to the, when archaeology first came out. Yes, absolutely. And and I probably would include Croesus because um, you know, I, I, I've I said this last week. It's mere existence it is a great thing for this game. Yeah. Um you know, and, and I I hope it brings more uh scaling. I hope that was what kinda of opened the door and showed people yeah. that hey, yeah. a scaling boss is a viable thing. And it's, hey, we're even calling uh Big Game Hunter partially a scaling boss now. Yeah, right. So all right. Uh as for new players, I think this boils down to three simple options, depending on which way you want to go. Um 
Number one, mobile. Just making it easy to play the game anywhere you are. No questions asked. I think that's definitely in there. New and improved divination. Um, I heard lots of horror stories before we heard the analytics of divination being hard to get into, and their analytics back that up. Divination is so fast now. Granted, it still needs a bit more of a place, I think, but overall it's a lot more fun and easier to train than it was. And if we're talking about getting into PVM, we got the three pillars covered. We got the tool set of RuneScape Mobile. We got the skilling side um, with um, uh, the other one that I mentioned. And you know what I'm going to say on the PVM front? Or sorry, with Divination? And then the PVM front, you know what I'm going to say? The Rex Matriarchs. I okay, yeah, I was because that's that. the perfect entry to PVM at this point for anybody wanting to do EOC PVM. Rex Matriarchs, perfect entry, doable with level level eighty gear. So I'd say those are the top three uh, for new players: mobile, divination, and update, and uh, Rex Matriarchs. Yeah. I would, I mean, definitely mobile. Um, and I I agree with your other two. I can't think of any. Well, yes, hold on. Was Davendel official in 21? Did yes, it but, it's a, but it's a mobile only experience. Still got included. So that, that's, right, because that's that also includes too. the new Birthorpe uh, flow. After yeah. it and first time user experience. Very good point. Very good point. I'm going to move that to the top of my list then. Thank you for mentioning that. Because we, uh, we did that uh, RuneScape's first time user experience monthly bit and we learned a lot from that about what makes RuneScape tick. So mm-hmm. that's definitely got to go to the top for new players, I think. Um, yeah. And I'll lump that in with mobile since it's the mobile tutorial and what happens after it. But okay. Dave and Dale and the new birth or first time user experience is number one. Divination is on there, as are the Rex Matrix. Yep. Agreed. Good. And the final question from Sean. If the eggs were to hatch and actually destroy Gielinor, but you had time to evacuate the people of Gielinor, at least the higher ups, because we know how that would work. What world or plane would you send them to and why? Examples include Zenaris, Tardiad, the Realm of the Fisher King, the Enchanted Valley, and so on. Ooh. I don't want to think that we need to do this, but I I don't think Zenaris is far away because that's the moon. Yeah, but everything's all crazy there, and them fairies all playing tricks on you and everything. <laughs> I say... You'll have to help me with the name of this place, Shane, because we only went there during one quest real quick. But do you remember going to the home world of Bandos? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ubiusk. There Ubiusk. And there's no Bandos, right? So an empty world, no god. So debauchery could ensue. Or um, fun. It's also known as fun. Um. So I, I say, let's go there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good. Uh, that's a good. Uh, that's a good option. I know. Uh, before people said that in the previous ones uh, they hid out in the abyss, but there was talk that this time even hiding in the abyss uh, might not uh, be enough with that. So I don't think I'll say the um, abyss, but you know, maybe our elves would have us, and I think Tardiad would be a good place to go. Um, though, or you know, maybe the best place to go is just behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. From the Gower Quest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we would be safe there, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. You know, the only time I get to go there is now is when uh, the clue scroll goes there. But um, overall, I'd say either behind the scenes or at. Uh, or tardy ad like uh, Sean said here on the list and you know these these ones are always fun to think about and we hope we actually don't have to think about this and it doesn't come to that point but who knows right 
Hey, Tardiad might be open. I mean, there might not be a god there to oversee what's going on either. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, who Good knows? point. Good point. Uh, since I think there's lots of question about what's going to happen with Saren uh, at the end of this. So. All righty. Uh, we're going to wrap the show up, but first we got our picks of the week. Mine is an article, um, and it's actually talking about the new launch of Windows 11 this week. Windows 11 is here. If you so choose to, you can go into the Microsoft Update Center and grab Windows 11. If you want to wait, you will wait until um, Microsoft rolls it out uh, to your device. And, you know, there's been lots of discussion, I think, about this one, because the number one thing you see is a completely revamped visual experience, rounded corners, uh, start menu in the center of the screen, kind of like the Mac OS dock. Um, A lot of questions about whether or not certain streaming tools are going to work. And that's why I haven't uh, pulled the trigger on it yet. But the weird part about this is that I don't see why it shouldn't work. Because aside from the changes to the UI, Windows 11 is basically Windows 10 with a couple of little things behind the scenes when it comes to what's called the trusted platform module um, being uh, required to run the new Windows 11. So that launched this week. And I want to get this eventually because there's a new uh, feature that's designed to help gamers, and it's called... Windows Direct Storage, and any game that supports this, uh, or rather any game, will be able to build support in for this. And it's going to be most apparent in games that are already on the Xbox, like your Halos and Forzas and whatnot. Because what Windows Direct Storage does, and this is one of my favorite features of Windows 10, or sorry, Windows 11, is that if you have a fast... um, NVMe SSD in your computer, which is basically an SSD that doesn't use the serial ATA SATA port. It uses the PCI Express controller on your motherboard. If you have one of those SSDs, you will be able to reap huge benefits for video game performance in that the video card, your GPU, will be able to load the game assets directly from that SSD and we'll be able to bypass a good chunk of what is currently a bottleneck in the computer because the data for your games will not need to leave what's called the PCI Express bus, which is how the video card communicates with your computer. And the PCI Express bus in any modern computer is fast. We're talking about gigabytes per second fast. So what this will do is this will mean that any game that supports this if you have the right SSD, will be able to reap huge performance benefits. And this is my favorite feature of Windows 11 and why I want to grab it eventually. That sounds cool, but I don't think... I highly doubt my SD is a the PC. Yeah, you'd, uh, have to, you'd have to check if it's plugged in through SATA, and if it is, then it's definitely not. Um, one of those we're talking here about computers that were mainly built in the last five years or so who are going to have this capability. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm on SATA. But... Yeah, and you know another thing that a lot of people are going to have to check out, and this seems to be an arbitrary wall that Microsoft is putting up, and it's that question about TPM, the Trusted Platform Module. A lot of Intel CPUs before the seventh generation, i.e. the like the i7-7700 and the i5-7500, ones that don't start with the number 7, so 6700, 6500, 4500, and so on down the line, a lot of those CPUs won't actually, and motherboards won't actually be able to work with Windows 11, believe it or not. And as far as anyone can tell, that's an arbitrary decision that was made by Microsoft, hence why I say... There's very little that has changed in the core of Windows 11 that necessitates them uh, doing this and requiring that and things like um, secure boot, which is is just really weird because Windows 11 is effectively Windows 10 with a different skin and some extra features and limitations bolted onto it, which is just a little bit weird, I'll say. 
So, well, I hope they make it real clear of who should and should not update. Well, there's actually this thing called the uh, Windows PC Health Check app that you can download um, through the page that's linked in the show notes at update.rsbnb.com. And if you run that, it will tell you if you can run Windows 11 and in particular what is holding you back from running it. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, so there's that. And just before you move on to yours, I'll mention that there are a couple of other things we could have talked about this week. We could have done a very traditional RSBNB update tech news this week because uh, Facebook and Instagram were down for about six hours uh, due to a configuration problem, as I'm sure many people noticed. Yes, it absolutely had nothing to do with the whistleblower. Right. Absolutely. Right. And, of course, there's also a major leak at Twitch.tv. So I would say, even though Twitch says no login details have been compromised, change your Twitch password just in case. Yeah. And, uh, uh uh-huh. And all of of your other Twitch accounts as well. Yeah. All right. What do you got for pick of the week? Um, okay. So, um, I've been on a wrestling tear lately and last week I had, um, my, well, no, last week my pick of the week was the, uh, Amazon. Anyway, um, the deaf robot. Yes. The deaf robot. <laughs> um, but this week I have a game for wrestling fans. Um, especially if you are a fan of the older style wrestling games. We're talking pre 2K um, kind of wrestling games. Oh. Um, but this is called uh, uh, Fire Pro Wrestling World. Um, you can pick it up on Steam. You can pick it up in the PlayStation Store. You can pick it, pick it up pretty much anywhere. Um, but it is a, a huge game. Huge, 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 huge game. Um, 2D wrestling. Um, but it, it, it's a real fun throwback um, to the way wrestling games used to be. Um, you can fully customize your wrestlers. You you um, can create uh, moves and create rings. You name it. It is. Um, uh-huh. And it has a split screen PVP. That was my question. Yep. And we have we also have the. Um, the Steam Workshop is in full effect, so you can get um, wrestlers that you know from, you know, different eras, um, you know, in the U.S. Um, primarily out of the box, it's going to, it's mostly, you know, Japanese wrestlers and New Japan and stuff like that. Um, so you will want to probably get some people that you know a little bit better from the uh, right. from the shop or create right. them yourselves. Um but it's fun. I mean it's got it's got barbed wire landmine Ooh. death matches. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know that would, uh, you, you knew that would catch my eye, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, all ki- all kinds of uh of fun stuff. So yeah, if you are if you're in the wrestling, if you're in the wrestling games, um give it a shot um i've been playing it all week and it's been a lot of fun um and it's called fire pro wrestling world all right and as uh, expected that is linked in the show notes at update.rsbnb.com to steam all right time for some achievements this week we only got a few of them so let's get going so starting off we have crying wolf with 99 archaeology on october 6th tanny kia got 120 herblore zerdones got 120 slayer Moving on to the fifth, we have Moo Dragon X with 99 Archaeology, Sethroth with 99 Crafting, The Outdoors got 120 Archaeology, Darkest Night got 99 Fire Making on the third, Dr. Reggie got 99 Thieving, Ubi Danubi got 99 Fire Making, and The Outdoors again cropped up with 99 Invention rounding out the third. All right, and then moving on to the second, we have Dr. Reggie again with 99 Agility. We have Iron... (laughs) I'm Maces with 120 Archaeology. We have Twisted Soul with 99 Agility. And we have Twisted Soul with 99 Rune Crafting. And then on the first, we have Dr. Reggie with 99 divination um and gooey cookie with 99 ring crafting let's see also on the first we have lazy colonel with 99 farming and 99 cooking 
Then we move on to Thieves with 200 mil prayer. Oh Very my nice God. job. Oh, my God. Yes, yes the, the, the expense. Um, <laughs> and then last but, last but not least, we have Potato with 120 farming on September 30th. Nicely done, everyone. Nicely done. All right. What have you been up to on RS this week? Um doing a lot of elder cutting and getting arrowheads. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing except uh-huh. for when we went to Croesus over the weekend and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was um, a success. We're going to have to do more of that. I think. Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed that. Um, even though, you know, particles turned to red and I was not helping yeah. our group <laughs> in, in that regard, it's but um, it was fun. And um, and like I said, it was also nice to know that um, if someone was there that was calling out things and I did have my route down, that I could do it. Um, I could participate, and, and that was, you know, that was good. Um, and everyone was good enough to make up for my mistakes in the end. So, yeah, and, and that's hey. the... And that's the point. The number one thing with going with a group and a group you know is that, you know, as long as you say what you did, there's a, it's, it's all fixable. It's all fixable. Mm-hmm. So that's a good thing about Croesus. But, yep. um, as for me, I have been, I've done a few, I've done a few hours of four man Croesus and I actually meant to say this earlier in the show. Um, But uh, tonight and last night, I did actually sample the public instances uh, just around reset time. And it turns out that World 98 um, had public instances that were running and running quite well, at least the past two days. So that actually surprised me a week week plus in that there's public instances that that are just, you know, chugging along for the the boss. So that's good. that's, That's great. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I've been elder, elder wood cutting, of course, as well. Um, it feels like elder wood cutting is actually a viable wood cutting training method now with the fire torch and that it's, uh, not as slow as it was in the past. And it's just gonna, um, you know, be, I, I feel like with, okay, we can actually do this now. We're getting decent numbers and this could be a long slog if I wanted to, to 120. So I'm happy with it, believe it or not. Nice. So, so yeah. That's where I'm at, and that's what I've been up to. Um, I don't believe there's much else to say. I, I, I did get around to updating the uh, subscribe page at update.rsbnb.com slash subscribe, which has a list of places you can subscribe to the podcast ad. Of course, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, a new one that's on the page now, but it's been there a while if you've been able to find it on your own, is Amazon Music. So if you're an Amazon Music user, you can... You can find update on that podcast platform. And what this means is that if you have one of those Amazon devices, the robot or the other ones that start with E or A, you can listen to RSBNB update on that, which is actually really neat when you think about it. We're also on Pocket Cast, Stitcher, and of course YouTube at youtube.com slash RSBNB. And I would encourage everybody to go there, even if you listen to the audio version to youtube.com slash rsbnb and subscribe. We have passed 950 subscribers, and I feel comfortable asking everybody to help us with this push. Get to 1,000. Enable YouTube community features. We're at around 955-ish, so if you haven't subscribed yet or you know someone who hasn't subscribed yet, tell them to subscribe at youtube.com slash rsbnb. Of course, that's where we publish the nibbles as well. Uh, bits and pieces of each podcast uh, at the end of the week um, in addition to full ones so just visit youtube.com slash rsbnb but with that being said we'll be back next week for another episode of rsbnb update take care everyone see you then see ya